Hey y'all. Welcome, Welcome back, back to my channel. channel. I said hey. Hey. Welcome back to my channel. Hey girl. Hey y'all. I'm Jasmine W. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Channel? Channel. <laughs> this thing is an animal, okay? <laughs> y'all know I like to jump right into it, but first I must let you know that I have a podcast called Jasmine Gives Bad Advice. It comes out every Thursday on Spotify, Apple, Google, anywhere you listen to podcasts. So check it out. It's really funny. And it's a, a combination of my skits, uh, making fun of y'all's situations that you write me about and rants from me <laughs> anyway also y'all know i love to support black business on this channel and i want to shout out minty bong water minty bong water is a tiktok creator and he has his own line of teas i ordered some today i can't wait to show you guys when i actually get it but i wanted to shout his link below um he makes these teas custom and he has some dope merch as well so I bought some for myself and then a gift for a friend. So go ahead and check out Minty Bong Water. The link is below. Anyway, this is Married at First Sight, y'all. Child, this episode really tickled me. <laughs> uh, it wasn't extremely like dramatic or anything like that. It just really tickled me for some reason. I don't know. I had fun watching it. Y'all know on my channel, we always start with the what? Most boring couple. You're right, the most boring couple. Now, I'm not going to lie. I was halfway watching this episode because then nothing happened. So I was like, let me just halfway listen, child. And plus, I was in the comments on my own Instagram reading uh, foolish comments. Um... Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, anyway, let's start with the most boring couple like we always do on my channel, baby, like we always do, do. on my channel. I have the least amount of notes on light-skinned Keisha and light-skinned Derek. Okay. His name be changing. Um, if you're new to my channel, we call them light-skinned Keisha because they were talking about their light-skinned trauma on when they first met, honey, and I was like, okay. Anyway. Womp womp. So light skinned Keisha and light skinned Derek. Let's just jump right into the fact that they had a, a 70s party. Each couple had a party this week to have their friends over to apparently talk about their relationship. That's not what I do when I invite my friends over, but okay. <laughs> uh, you know, if you have enough, if you have a party with your partner, y'all don't call people over to talk about your relationship. You call people over to cackle, drink, play games, and have a good time. But I guess that's what they do on, on a married at first sight exactly every season but anyway the light-skinned uh couple had an afro party a 70s party um at first they only had three friends i was like this is all we're gonna get but a couple more of their friends showed up the one thing i was wondering i was like when we saw nate's friends before he got married i don't believe i don't believe i remember seeing any black friends at all and there were no white people at this party so what happened to his white friends he had they go you just gonna marry light-skinned Keisha, and now you don't invite the white friends over no more what happened to the white girl you used to date where's she at why she didn't come she said she used to be at your house playing games all the time stasia said she couldn't come <laughs> i'm wondering where is she at where is megan she can't come what was her name i don't know okay anyway um Nate's friends kind of told on him they said that he has an abandonment complex they said that maybe he's hesitant to have kids with you Stasia because his own mother wasn't there for him so you know now he's feeling a certain way now he's feeling like maybe she won't be there for you know him if he has kids I guess I don't think that's it I think that um I think I'm not denying the fact that he has, you know, abandonment issues, but I don't think that he doesn't want to have kids with Stasia because he's afraid Stasia is going to abandon their children. I think he truly believes that he doesn't know Stasia well enough. One year is very, very soon, especially when, you know, they got married at first sight. And I also think that he's wants to be more financially stable. So those are um, three good reasons not to wanna jump into, um, you know, having a child with somebody. And I think those are the reasons, not because his mom abandoned him. But that's just me. Um, and we don't know, so. Light Scandy uh, Lenny told the guys at the end of the episode that they have yet to consummate their marriage. They haven't had sex yet, but he did, um, have some dessert and are you not embarrassed <laughs> and all the men was like baby you could have kept that to yourself because you got played 
I personally was like, okay, he's so um, he's so happy about that child. He happy, he happy as hell about the fact that uh, he uh, he uh 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 <laughs> had some papaya. I'm like, okay, you're mighty happy about getting papaya, and you know, anyway, um, <laughs> Mitch was laughing at him. Mitch was like. I sort of um, think of that as sort of, you know, an appetizer, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And I'm looking for the whole meal. <laughs> anyway, those are all of the notes that I had on that couple. I know y'all gonna be like, Jasmine, what about when they had said, well, what about, I didn't write it down. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's move on to the next couple. This one's really hard. Let's, oh, this one's not that hard. Let's do Bendy. Ben and Mindy, okay? Uh, I know her name ain't Mindy. That's what we call her on my channel, okay? Anyway, um, I wrote down, she's not over the nurse thing. I hear it itching right here. Anyway, Girl, get to I the wrote review. down, she's not over the nurse thing. Oh my God. Ben said that he didn't believe she was a nurse and he went and told Justin then he had to come back and apologize because he found out that she indeed was a nurse and she's still talking about this. Why are we still talking about this? Like, oh my gosh. Um, I wrote down, when their friends came over, I wrote down, don't tell people your business. Yeah, stop doing that. They started talking about the honeymoon and how they was like, well, the friends were like, well, how did things go? And Ben was like, uh, well, you know, uh, and then Mindy was like, tell them how, tell them what happened. Well, I mean, things kind of, it was kind of quite, tell them, tell them everything. Start from the beginning. Okay, well, <laughs> you know, at first we wasn't really clicking. Tell them, start from the beginning. Be, okay, damn. Okay, girl, damn. We get it. Why don't you tell the story then? You want him to tell the story so bad, you tell it. You say what happened. You want to you want to start from the beginning to the end and you want everything to be accurate, you tell the damn story then. Exactly. Okay? Cuz Ben obviously don't want to talk about it and the friends was like he obviously don't want to talk about it. He doesn't know how to explain it because honestly, this is none of their business. Why you are having a party to bring them over and talk about how your marriage is bad to me is odd. This is a very weird party. This is not a party at all. This is some sort of intervention. <laughs> and I don't want to be here. Listen, when Ben's friend jumped in and said, why don't you tell us? I was clapping. I stood up. I said, exactly. Thank you. Thank you for the only person who has some common sense in the room, honey. Like, why can't you tell us? You over here pressuring him, interrupting him, telling him to start over, telling him to tell the truth, all this kind of stuff. You tell us then. Tell us what happened. We can ask, go consult with Ben to see if that's actually how it went down. Exactly. So get to spitting. Anyway, Ben told her friends, I've apologized. I've said I'm sorry. I said I was worthless. I said I ain't shit. I didn't apologize to everybody and their mama. And she's still holding a grudge. And he's right. <laughs> Ben's friend said, if Ben came in here right now, we asked him, is she a nurse? And he said, what do you think he would say? And she said, he would say yes. They said, okay, what's the problem? Exactly. And she's like, once I've been burned, I'm done. It sounds like you are expecting perfection. Even burns heal, honey. Like you, you're expecting your, your spouse to never make a mistake. Baby, you might as well just stay single. You expecting your spouse to be perfect, to never, ever make a mistake. All he did was go to some, he didn't even know you. He went to somebody else and said, hey, I think she lying. Then came back and confronted you and you cleared it up and you still holding a grudge. That was a whole two weeks ago. Child, Ben said he didn't got her her chicken sausage. He didn't got her flowers. <laughs> I'm like, baby, chicken and sauce, chicken sausage from the grocery store? Yeah, that's what? And flowers. <laughs> you thinking you didn't went above and beyond. <laughs> it ain't enough. I'm done with Ben. But anyway, um, I really felt for Ben though when he said, and this is my personality, Ben said he's quick to forgive. 
And he was shocked at how she's just continuing to hold on to this and she's not letting it go. And I'm like that. I'm really quick to forgive people. And sometimes I come across people who are not quick to forgive. They do not let shit go. And I cannot stand that. That is one of my pet peeves in life. You have to be able to move forward and move on. If you do not know how to let things go, this is not going to be a good friendship, relationship sort of thing with Jasmine. So I completely understood what Ben was talking about. Yes. You lying. Um, at the end of the day, they haven't been intimate because... Uh, Mindy said that her walls are up, honey. Baby, your walls is going to continue to be up and dry Ooh. if you don't know how to move forward, okay? So, um, yeah. You be holding grudges, though. Yeah, your, your walls is going to be something in a minute, baby. But let me tell you something. <laughs> you, better, you better forget. For, you better um, figure out how to forgive and forget. Remember that show? Um... Yeah, I wrote down, you should learn how to forgive and forget because your partner will make mistakes. And we're human. We're all going to make mistakes. Some will be tiny and some will be bigger. Um, this is the tiny one, in my opinion. Let's move on to the next couple. You be holding grudges, though. I want to be clear. You be holding grudges. Let's move on to this. I'm really going in order right now. Let's move on to um, Kristen and Mitch. Kristen and Mitch. At the beginning of the episode, Kristen was going on, on and on. I said, I wrote down, what the F is she talking about? <laughs> what is she talking about, baby? Anyway, um, Kristen was talking to her friend and her friend was like, he needs to know. Have you talked to him about your past? Girl, shut up. Um, engagement. <laughs> and Kristen was like, no, not yet. I haven't mentioned it. You need to talk to him about it. Well, everybody I talked to about it, you know, they said I'm a stupid, stupid bitch. <laughs> Talk to him about it. He needs to know. No, he don't. Why does he need to know? What is he going to say? What are you going to say to somebody? And he he took all the money out of my account and he left me with $1. And I used to sleep in a tent in the backyard because he didn't let me sleep in the house. What is somebody supposed to say? They're going to say, damn, bitch, damn. Okay, that, that's what that's the kind of response I look for. Like, why do you need to tell your new partner how bad your old partner was so that they can understand what, how they treated you and how long was that? You almost married them and they treated you like that. So why? Yeah, it's not. Why? It's no looking good. You know, I think if you've been in a very traumatic relationship, and it comes up because you're triggered or it comes up because your your current person is saying, what was your ex like or what was your past relationships like? That's maybe a good time. But to bring up your um, the way your ex did you dirty and you spent your whole life savings on the wedding and all that for no reason, I don't, I, I don't understand why you would do it. Mm -mm. No, I don't believe in telling the new person how bad the old person treated you so that they can know exactly what you put up with for how long, how sad and depressed you were, and how you got through it. That's that's neither here nor there, to be honest. We together now. That's just me. But anyway, um, I wrote down, your friend is wrong, Kristen. Your friend is wrong. Do not talk about your ex unless it comes up. I think that married at first sight is not only a social experience, uh, experiment for marriages, it's also a social experiment that always tells you to not listen to your friends. Every season. Because if you look at the friends in this situation, everybody's friends, except for Ben's friends, were not supportive, did not seem happy, did not seem excited, did not seem positive. They were all negative Nancys with bad advice. And bad attitudes. Anyway, um, Mitch ended up telling her, I'll never do that. I'll never do what he did to you. Um, and she said, now I can trust him 100%. Now, just to know that he said that he would never do that to me, now I can trust him 110%. Now I love him. He's perfect. No, he's not. And you know what? He might not do something that to you, but he'll do something else. 
<laughs> like, girl, don't withhold no uh, papaya from Mitch. Okay, he out of there. Because he look like he retaliate, honey. Anyway, Mitch was serious about Raphael's party rental, honey. <laughs> Mitch was no not playing. But why did my mama call me and tell me, that's how you are? You're Mitch. And I started explaining to her why she needs to stop buying baggies. She was like, I don't even buy baggies anymore after you told me. I was like, that's it. My mama come over to my house. Don't bring no plastic. You do not bring plastic items into my house if we can do it. We don't buy plastic in my house. Paper cups if we're having a party. Paper plates if we're having a party. We recycle. No plastic. Okay? What can we do to cut down on our carbon footprint, our environmental disaster that we've created? Oh, not us, but white men, right? But now we have to clean it up. So I'm glad Mitch is taking responsibility here, but I'm telling y'all, stop wasting, okay? Plastics can't be recycled, and I'm not gonna go on a rant, but I could. But uh, anyway, I 100% supported Mitch's uh, rant about Raphael's party rental and the reusable shot ramekins. Those can be used for all types of things around the house. Ketchup, condiments, shots when people come over, jello shots that can be frozen. I mean, come on people. But anyway, um, I wrote down that they actually had the best party because guess what? They had an actual party and that's what this was supposed to be about. Not just to sit around and bitch and moan, okay? Um, I would be mad if you invite me over and you complain about your relationship the whole time. <laughs> I'd be like, dang, <laughs> anybody want a jello shot? <laughs> okay, or I got to head out. Uh, I wrote down, I'm anti-plastic. We should all be this radical. We're going to die. <laughs> burn up. Oh, well, we're going to die anyway, but you know, faster. We're going to burn if we don't. But anyway, um, it was so odd to me that Mitch is such an environmentalist, but he, hated the, he hates the dog. He said the dog is useless. Right. Well, what are we saving the planet for? Just for us? That's selfish. It's for animals as well. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, um, Kristen's friend came back around to give her some more poor advice. She said, you can't be the only one compromising. Mitch has to do some compromising too. Girl, be quiet. And then she gave a death stare. First of all, Mitch is not going to compromise on his values being being um an environmentalist is not only his personal passion it's his uh, aligns with his values it's damn near his religion and it's his job he's not going to compromise on that what would you like for him to compromise on it don't sound like she asking him to compromise on nothing oh so there it is but i want to know what would the friend like for mitch to compromise on for Kristen? because it's not going to be plastic honey exactly okay period I wrote down, Kristen's friend in the pink is a no-no. It's a no for me, dog. Yeah, she's too negative. She doesn't smile. I find her quite aggressive. Yeah. I'm scared. I wish she would smile more. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they tell black women. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, Kristen said things were going great. Mitch said he's not getting a wink of sleep. If Mitch continues to lose sleep over this dog, He's, he's going to say no on decision day, period. I think it's going to take something that small, to be honest. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's move on to Justin and Alexis. Alexis called her friend and said, yo, nephew got attacked. <laughs> There's plenty of people who aren't black who watch my channel. And I just want to tell y'all, that is a black person's sentence. To refer to your dog as, as as somebody as your sister's nephew, yeah, yeah, that's a black people thing. Yeah, yeah, you look, look at your niece, look at your niece over here tearing up her toy. Like that's a total thing that black people do. Okay, I was laughing at that. Um, her friend's advice was her to her was don't go all the way in, hold back, don't get heartbroken, keep a wall up. Don't let him too close to you and you don't get too close to him. That was terrible advice. Very terrible. Like, we know Justin's like completely fake and not that great. But in general, in a, rela in a relationship, 
letting those walls down is how you make connections really take a risk to really fall in love with somebody it's it's going to be hard to create a romantic serious romantic relationship while you have walls up you're gonna have to bring some of that down and open yourself up and really take a risk and her friend told her to do everything but <laughs> um Anyway, Alexis got mad at Justin because she said her dog was throwing up blood and hadn't eaten in two days. Why she didn't know that about her own dog, I'm not sure. Right. Like, why are you consulting with Justin about what your dog is doing? Like, wouldn't you know on day one if he didn't eat all day? Hmm. Or maybe she said, um, the dog has a dog eating. And he was like, the dog ain't ate in two days. And she was like, what? Why? Do you... <laughs> maybe that's how the conversation went. I don't know. We didn't get to see that part. We just got to see the part where they were upset. Um, so the, apparently the dog was throwing up blood, hadn't eaten in two days. It was sick. And Alexis said, uh, Justin, why didn't you tell me? And he said, I thought I had it under control. Girl, what? By doing what? Right. By doing nothing. The dog is damn near dying. And you're not going to say nothing. My mom didn't really understand this. And I was like, there's no way in hell that my partner would allow our dog to throw up blood and not say nothing to me. Justin may be killing a dog. That don't make no sense. <laughs> like as soon as the dog throw up blood, we on the phone, the dog threw up blood. What's going on? What, what, what can we do? But you thinking you're gonna, you, you're gonna handle it by not doing anything. By watching. And not telling Alexis. He poisoned the dog. And then when she confronts you about your... And she kept saying, he's vague. He's vague. It's not that. He just withholds information, which is very, very close to lying. Justin is killing a dog. He's like, what do you want from me? We want you to tell the truth and, and, and be actionable. Don't just wait around for shit to happen. Right. We want you to be, you know, what do they call that? Proactive. Instead of waiting for bad things to happen, and then when they do, acting like you don't know what's going on. Um, he said he thought he was being helpful by not telling Alexis that the dog was throwing up blood and hadn't eaten for two days. Okay. He took absolutely this much accountability, which is none. Hey, look at that. Zero. <laughs> like. Oh, that's a zero. Oh. It was shocking to me that he said, what do you want me to do? I just want you to be honest and tell me what's going on. But I was trying to help you. It's like gaslighting. Like, I know that's not exactly gaslighting, but it felt very gaslighty to me. It's like, I didn't tell you because I was helping you. I didn't tell you because I was helping the dog. The situation is really bad, but you can't blame me for not telling you because I was protecting you. No, you weren't. You were just being lazy as hell. And like also very like odd. Like why wouldn't you not tell me that the dog is not feeling well? He killing the dog. Ciao. Um, and he also said, it seems like you're not paying attention to how I'm feeling. How are you feeling? You're just feeling like you're not being listened to. But what I'm saying is I'm mad because you damn near lied by withholding information. You acted like everything was cool when it wasn't. Our dog could have died. What's going to happen when you have a child? He going to keep lying. This is the second time he's been negligent. I would not trust procreating with him at all. Did y'all notice that when Alexis asked to be unmiked and she left and she was like, I can't deal with this. He was smiling. Yes, we did. He was like smirking. He was holding back a smile. It's a, it's a, it's like, this is a game for him and he enjoys it. He told her, he gaslit her by when she, when she said, when she said, you are not being honest. He said, you know, I think you like arguing. That, to me, that felt like gaslighting. Now you're telling me that I am making this up because I like to argue with you instead of the reality. And the reality is that you did not tell me that the dog was ill for 
at least 24 hours. He killed the dog. But now it's because I like to argue, he poisoned not because the dog. the dog was sick. He killing that dog. <laughs> Weird. Weird. I'm sorry. Allegedly. Um, I said this relationship went sour faster than a Sour Patch Kids, honey. But I, then I remember at first they sour, then they sweet. But this was sweet first, then it got real sour. But I predicted that because I said when you fall in love hard, baby, the bruises, when them bruises start forming, you'd be like, what the hell, where I get this bruise from and this bruise from? It's because you, you're dumb. You're dumb. But anyway, his friend also make excuses, made excuses. His friend said when he sat down with Alexis and Alexis told the story, he was like, you know, I'm a man. And it's a man thing. Sometimes I'm just like, I didn't think. <laughs> That's what men do. No, what men do is make excuses and not take accountability. Ooh, that part. He made an excuse, didn't take accountability, didn't apologize, pretended like he did something to benefit her. And now you are sitting over here talking about how that's normal behavior when it's not. You know, sometimes men just don't, men don't, we not proactive like women. You're not going to put all the earnest on women to be more, more actionable. Okay. Use more common sense. All right. To continue to save lives and so that you can be lazy, doo-doo, bur bird, beavis, and butthead. <laughs> what? <sighs> then the friend, a girl going to talk about some, I have a serious question. Do you love him? Girl, who cares at this point? Her dog is being poisoned. And Alexis said, yes. And finally, we have Miguel and Lindy. Okay. I wrote down, Miguel is having a great time. Uh, Lindy's in the kitchen, cooking and cleaning. And he said, this is great. This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> um, then Miguel jumped into a conversation with his friend, negative Nate. Exactly. Okay. He said, hey, you know, so how are things going? Miguel was like, she's great. She's wonderful. I love my wife. She's perfect. I love having a wife. Really? She's that great? Yeah, she's wonderful, man. I mean, she's just beautiful. She's kind. She's like way younger than us. And she's ugly. Yeah, but I mean, she's really mature. I mean, she's sweet. You know, she cooks, she cleans. Well, yeah, that's because you get to have sex with her and make out with her. And her papaya stinks. What? what the hell? Okay. <laughs> the hell is you talking about, dude? This, this guy's over here elated about being married to a very nice girl until she, she, the, the next the next scene. But you know, he's really excited about being married to her and you bringing him down, why? Why are you bringing him down? Why is you hating my dude? Child, anyway, Miguel said she cleans, she cooks, she's an oasis. And what are you? What do you do? <laughs> anyway, they had a party. Their their party theme were was contestants on a game show, and everybody dressed up in everything from a pickle suit to a pizza suit to a fairy to everything else. Baby, what 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 do we what 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 are the costumes coming from? Right, she was grapes. Right. What game show is this? To me, contestants from a game show is just regular clothes because every single game show I've ever seen, they just wear their regular clothes. So I don't get I don't get the theme. But anyway, I say I wrote down what does a pizza and a pimp have to do with a game show? Y'all just said it's Halloween at this point. Y'all should have just had a Halloween party. That's what Miguel I'm saying. Miguel was talking to the black girl and he said they call their deepness, their their trauma. They call it deep darkies. I would have said, what the hell did you just call me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, that's a RuPaul's Drag Race joke. Uh, it, it, it kind of, but anyway. Anyway, Mindy got in, or not Mindy, but uh, Lindy got into a conversation with Miguel because she needs health insurance. Bad. And that's the only reason her ass is on this show. I believe it. Yeah, she needed health insurance immediately. Yeah, she needs it now. 
And Miguel said, great, you need health insurance. Um, change change your name now to Santiago. And she said, Santiago, que? She said, <laughs> and she said, que? Okay, she was confused as hell. Quien? Okay. Oh, uh-uh. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> she said, I wrote down, baby, if you change your name, you're still going to be a doctor. Okay? Your doctorate is not associated with your last name. Yeah, doctors are allowed to get married and change their name and still be a doctor. Yeah. He asked you to change your name, not your social security number. Right. And she said, it's my identity. It's who I am. It's my identity. I've been in my whole life. It's my identity. Girl. You realize that names are just made up. Exactly you will still be attached to that identity if you change your name to Santiago. What is the problem? I wrote down the grape and the cucumber are confused as hell. And why is Lindy telling them this? All her business. Why is she telling them all their uh, they business? They're looking shocked. They expected to come over here and have grape juice and cucumber cocktails. And now she telling him, them how selfish Miguel is because he doesn't want her on his insurance. Baby, he don't want to pay your premium. Right. Okay, do you know how much it is to add a spouse? It's probably like $250, $300 a check <laughs> a month. <laughs> Baby, he don't want to pay that. He said, you, you, don't, you ain't got insurance? I said, damn. Okay, why not? <laughs> and I really think she came on the show because she needed insurance. I really do. I think she came on the show because she needed insurance. Isn't she a doctor? Isn't she almost completed with, you know, hasn't she almost completed her residency or whatever she's doing? Isn't she going to get insurance very soon? Why is she relying on Miguel? You didn't have insurance 14 days ago. Why is it so dire now that you have insurance coverage? Yeah, she ain't got it now. And then... Why are you acting so shocked and bamboozled when he said, take my last name? And you're like, this is serious. In order to take your last name, I don't know your finances. I don't know your bank account. This is just an experiment. I don't know if we're going to be together. I don't know if this is permanent. I don't know how permanent this is. I'm just not sure. He just said all that last week and you got mad. Hypocrite. You got mad and said that you didn't think it was he was taking it seriously. It was an experiment for him. Well, if you want him to take it seriously, if it's not an experiment for either of you, change your name. Just like you got mad at him last week for talking about how long you guys may or may not be together, baby, change your name. It, it, if you don't want to change your name, fine. But it's the way she, to me, that this entire thing was manipulative. This was manipulative to me. And then she started cussing at him, saying, how am I going to effing change my name when you won't even let me go to the effing doctor, the effing gynecologist? Lindy, calm the hell down. I thought she was going to start crying. She almost did. Child. <laughs> Child, that white supremacy came out real quick. Oh, my goodness. Um, She almost called the police on Miguel. After Mindy or after Lindy told the girls what she did, some of them agreed with her, some of her, some of them didn't. Stasia said, I agree with her. Um, Kristen said, I'm on Miguel's side. She came back and she eventually apologized to Miguel, but what she said initially was, I'm not proud of how I acted, but now you see how I am when I feel abandoned, when I feel like I'm not protected. It's giving evil. <laughs> Babe, that's not an apology. I'm not proud of what I did is not an apology. But now you see how I am when I don't get what I want. And take it as a lesson. Scary as hell. As, as hell. hell. She said, I don't like that place that I go to whenever I don't get what I want. And he said, yeah, I don't like it either. And she was like, I know. I'm sorry you had to see that. What the hell? <laughs> Girl, you need you need some counseling. You seriously need some counseling. 
But at the end of the day, it worked because Miguel said he's going to put her on his insurance. And she said, that's what I like to hear. Okay, and that's on that. Child, the manipulation, the persuasion, and the manipulation. And the manipulation. Anyway, honey, I can't wait to hear y'all's comments. Let me know what you think by commenting below. And I'm just going to tell you this. If you are still here and you haven't subscribed to my channel, baby, you a hater at this point. Go ahead and click subscribe. Okay? I'll see y'all. Bye.